Welcome back here on TSL today for our third and final segment of the day. Giovanni Heater and Nick Brown with you. Nick, how about them Hokies starting off big with a uh, 1-0 record as they take down Delaware State in their season opener on Monday night? 95-57, transfers look good, freshmen looked solid. Padula picked up from where he left off. Lynn Kidd looked pretty decent there in the uh, uh, in the starting uh, role at the five. And, I mean, not much to say except uh, that Vasily is the real deal, man. Yeah, real deal, no doubt about it. Went 12 for 16, shot the ball 75%. He also went six for nine from downtown, had 10 rebounds, 30 points, had himself a nice double-double. I mean, it's safe to say that a guy's not going to shoot 75% and shoot six for nine, but hey, he got hot and I think he uh, opened some eyes as far as the question is, how can he adjust to playing this ACC brand of basketball? Obviously, he was not playing an ACC opponent. In fact, he was playing an opponent that won two games last year uh, in, in their entirety of their season. So um, obviously, the quality of opponent was even worse than what he was playing against at Wright State, but I mean, it's no slouch to go out and uh, go shoot 30 points. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a shooter. The six of nine threes, that's going to translate. He's not going to shoot six of nine threes uh, throughout the season, but he's going to be a good shooter. Uh, he's the real deal behind the arc. I think he's a better shooter behind the arc than Aluma. I think Aluma had a little bit more post moves, uh, and I think Aluma was more aggressive and a little stronger in the paint. That's my only knock on Basili. So he looked a little slow out there. Yeah. Uh, he, could, he couldn't run the fast break, and... Uh, he wasn't as strong as I would have liked to see in the paint. I'm not saying he was getting dominated at all, but uh, he wasn't playing physical. Uh, and I know Mike Young was talking about that too. Mike Young actually put him on blast uh, on the post-game show with Mike Burnup uh, kind of saying he didn't play the best defense and he didn't rebound as well. Dude had 10 rebounds. Um, so I'd like to see him play a little more physical down there. Um but besides that, man, he's an offensive weapon. So that was kind of my question for you. When you compare him to Keve Aluma, are, is Virginia Tech gaining offense and losing defense? Is it pretty much the same player offensively? Even though like they might be better at different things, are you getting the same production offensively? Or you think all around this is kind of a, a minus for Virginia Tech? I think it's going to be... About the same. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I think it's he's going to add another weapon behind. He's a better the arc. shooter than Aluma. Yeah, That's he's going to add a weapon behind the arc for the Hokies. That uh, I mean, Aluma could shoot, but not as good as Basili right. uh, can. Um, but uh, I don't know. The defense worries me a little bit. I have to. I mean, obviously, it's only one game, it's one game. and he can adjust. Um, so we'll see. Um, Aluma was pretty good. I'd say Aluma's top two or three big man of all time at Tech. So that's. I mean, that's. It's not far from the truth that so Basili it's it's really hard to replace top three ever at Tech so uh, but I, I do think I don't think you're going to see as much of a drop off um, but I will say I think Poteet uh, added uh, where Gasson uh, kind of lacked I think Poteet's going to be a better backup big man than Gasson was for that sure that was kind of my question so would you see out of Link Kid and and Poteet combined kind of to fill that spot those guys are going to be expected to produce on the inside yeah I, I mean I was watching the game and I completely forgot Justin Mutz wasn't playing you know right so you add him in there Lynn Kid coming off the bench thought Lynn Kid was a little iffy on offense but he was nasty on the rebounds uh especially offense rebounds he had four of those things um eight points ten boards uh he filled the role He's kind of a role player, uh, yeah. got a great rebound. Uh, but I loved watching Poteet, man. Poteet is he's, he's a big dude. Yeah. I mean, that is, I look at him and I'm like, there's no way I'm the same species as that man. I mean, that <laughs> dude is gigantic. He's a mountain. Uh, nine points, four rebounds, five of the seven, uh, five of his points came from free throws. Five, seven free throws. That was encouraging uh, to see the big man uh, knock down some free throws. Uh so I'm not worried about the backcourt death for the Hokies. I'm not worried about depth at all for Virginia Tech. I think uh, production is going to stay pretty even throughout the game uh, in any game. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I you add Mutz in there at the four uh, to start, uh, and I think this team's going to be pretty good. How about the flashes that we saw? Only four points, but the flashes of athleticism that we saw at uh, the freshman MJ Collins. I was really impressed with his ball handling ability, his athletic ability, and I think you fine-tune a couple of things. He could be a real big contributor uh, by the end of the season, really. Yeah, he played kind of the three um, in high school and kind of the four as well. Uh, well, because high school, there's a lot shorter right. kids out there, and he's just a big dude. Uh, but he's going to come in here and play more of the three uh, 
like kind of solidified there. Uh, and I thought, man, he could handle the ball really well for the three. He's physical. Uh, he was getting into passing lanes, uh, shaking it off some defenders. He's two of seven from the field, missed some shots, but he can get he's open. Getting separation he's getting sure. a lot of separation. So I'm excited for MJ Collins. Of course, you had Rodney Rice. I mean, again, forget, oh, Mutz didn't play. Rodney Rice didn't play. That's yep. a top 100 recruit right there for the Hokies. Uh, one of the best shooting guards uh, out of DeMatha. Uh, I'm really excited to see him come in and play. How much do you think um, that'll decrease uh, MJ Collins' role when Rodney Rice is healthy? Because... Rice could end up being, uh, you know, say you want to run both of them at the two. Yeah. Um, you know, they're kind of going to play off each other. I think Rice is going to more slip into the one. Uh, Hunter Couture will stay at two. Hunter yeah. Couture is running the one when Padula was off. But I think when Padula is off the court and Rice is fully healthy, I think oh, Rice is going to be the one. Rice was the two and the three at DeMatha. Um, but he got here to Tech. Mike Young was like, yep, you're a point guard. So uh, I think he's going to be a pretty decent uh, ball distributor as well. Um, so I don't think that's going to affect MJ Collins as much as people think because I think MJ is going to stay at the three. Um, but I, I do think that once Virginia Tech is fully together, uh, healthy and not suspended, um, they're going to be really good. Also wanted to point out Darren Buchanan Jr. and Patrick Wessler will be redshirting. So the seven-footer and another three-star for the Hokies, Darren Buchanan, uh, will be uh, sidelined for the season. Uh, and that's just... There's too many guards, and, well, there's just so much depth on this team that, you know, there's no point in playing them this year and burning a red shirt when they may not crack that, uh, get as much playing time uh, as they would think uh, till and get them developed. I saw Patrick Wessler working with MJ or Poteet uh, before the game, and he's got the post moves, man, going one-on-one with Poteet. He looks good, but get him developed, get Darren Buchanan developed. He'll have more playing time next year. Um once Couture leaves, uh, and uh, well, Maddox will probably stay. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about next year, too, but most poorly this year. Last nugget that I, that I really noticed that I thought was funny but also shows uh, how intense Mike Young can be going into the halftime break. He did not have time to talk to Evan Hughes uh, and, and Mac on the, uh, on the broadcast on the ACC network. Uh, he talked about how he was frustrated, how they had given up 34 points, realized that the buzzer beater got taken off and it was 31. And midway through the interview, he said, guys, I, I don't have time for this, and took the headset off. So, I mean, he was a little frustrated with how the first half went for Virginia Tech. Yeah, 95 to 57. I think G defensive adjustments were made, only 23 points in the second half, and that includes garbage time, too, with the Hokies bench coming out. Uh, so defense played much better there in the second half. Uh, I think Delaware State was shooting really well behind the arc to start the game, uh, and so that's how they kind of put up that many points. By the way, it kind of felt bad for the kid who – like they got the points taken off. I was like, leave those points up, man. Yeah. Tech's up 25, 26 at the moment. That dude's gonna remember that forever if he if that counts. I and mean, he made that against a you know power five ACC defending champs. I mean, that was an unbelievable shot three quarters away. Right. So I was a little upset for the kid that that was taken off, but yeah, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, Virginia Tech's defense really locked in the second half. All right, Virginia Tech, the men's team back in action on Thursday. They got Lehigh, the Mountain Hawks, are picked to finish third in the Patriot League. So maybe again, a little bit of step up in the uh, competition level for Virginia Tech on Thursday. And then Sunday, they're going to hang that banner uh, against William and Mary for their ACC championship. That does it today for TSL Today from uh, the Corporate Research Center right here in Blacksburg. Thanks for being with us. Tech Sideline Podcast is coming up next. He's Nick Brown. I'm Giovanni Heater, and we'll see you next time.